All right, so take me through a demo hack that you've prepared for us. I really want to see this and how this actually works. So there's a vulnerable piece of software on there's this computer. There's a vulnerable computer. piece of software over on this computer, right? right. So these, you see the only thing plugged into that computer is the power cord. The only thing that's special about that computer is it's connected to my wireless network, but that could effectively be just connected to the internet as well. Okay. So you just need a computer that's connected to the internet running a piece of vulnerable software. Now over here, I can use this program called IDA to analyze the software, right? So this piece of software is not open source. It's actually a problem from these computer security competitions I play called CTFs. So this is a this is the example CTF problem. I know I've already analyzed this, so I can tell you the vulnerability is in the change note function. I'm in the change note function. There's a read which reads in bytes, um, and it can read in more bytes than fit into the buffer. What happens then is called a buffer overflow, and you can overwrite whatever comes after that buffer. So that's the vulnerability, and we can analyze it here. So I developed this exploit for this program based on this vulnerability. Found the vulnerability, developed the exploit. So this is the exploit. It's just a 65-line Python program. I'll run the exploit locally. So you can see local equals true, and Python exploit.py. OK. So first off, the exploit, actually, the exploit worked. So you can see here that I have a shell on this computer, because this is local. I'm running the exploit locally. Remember, I'm not exploiting the target yet. When you're developing an exploit, you test it on your machine before you fire it at, you know, whoever you exploit. So like I said, the vulnerabilities in the change note function, specifically in this read here. And so Kira, these little red lines here, show me that that read was hit twice. Let's look at what actually happened. So this was the buffer that was being read into. And see all those A's there? Yeah. It was overflowed, right? So here is before the buffer overflow. I can scroll down, and that's after the buffer overflow. So I'm telling the thing that I want to shell, and I mess around with the buffers a little bit so that actually gets called. Now we're going to actually target that machine. So I'm going to change local here to be false and rerun the exploit. So I have a shell. See if it's over there on Eagle. Now let's, um, you know, let's bring up a web browser and navigate to geohot.com. Hey, look at that. Let's throw up a calculator. Oh, man. Do you ever do this just to, like, fuck with your friends? That'd be terrible. No, uh, you only do it, I only do it on my machines. Um, exploits are too valuable. I wouldn't want, wouldn't my friends jacking my exploits. And do, like, is, so this is what it looks like when someone hacks something like a Sony. If I was actually targeting someone, I wouldn't pop up web browsers letting them know that I'm there. Right. So I can do whatever I want. I, I, have, a, I have a shell, so I can like, you know, navigate around their computer, see what's on it, without them even seeing anything. And that's the key. And then I can get persistence as well, which means that even if they reboot their computer, I still have access. So it's not, this isn't a sophisticated no. attack. <laughs> I prepared this demo this morning, so I don't have time to prepare something very intricate. Right. Um, but yeah, so this would not be, this would not even be like a very practical attack in the real world, right? So most of the time, like you said, people aren't just going on and then like, you know, putting up terrible YouTube videos. It's like they're going in and then they're just watching. I don't know. I'm not big, for me, like I said, it's about the journey, it's not about the destination. No, but I'm, I'm just wondering, I don't know. I have no idea what people do. I don't know any of those people. Like, mm -hmm. people think, oh, it's computer security, you must know all those people. I don't know any of them. I guess that's part of the fallacy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's part of this, like, like, media notion that, oh, he's a hacker and knows how to hack things, so therefore he must have friends and anonymous. No, all, for me, what it personally means, you know, to, to be good at this stuff, this is called binary exploitation. This is a small subset of what's known as hacking. Um, and I'm, I'm good at it. Right? So one of the things we talked about, another exploit could be used to privilege escalate, to break out of the virtual machine and onto the actual machine. Right. So you're not just going to be able to do like... But again, those exploits are worth a lot of money. Right. And if I had any of those exploits, I wouldn't talk about it. Because you want to sell it. No. Why, why wouldn't you then? Talk about it? Yeah. No. It's like, kind of like how you don't talk about how you got a you know, sniper rifle in your closet, right? Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. So you have sniper rifles in your closet, metaphorically. <laughs> no. But it sounds cool to say that I might, right? <laughs>